Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is the 12.9 inch 2018 iPad Pro, and I've been using this every single day since it came out for the past year. This is my main device that I use when I'm not editing videos. And so you'll see I have the keyboard case on it, and we'll talk about a few different things, but the time codes for all of the different sections of this video are linked in the description below if you'd like to take a look at those. Now, the first thing is the keyboard cover. I use it on the iPad Pro all the time. You can see it has some marks on it, and if I flip it over here it's it does pick up fingerprints and things pretty easily and it hasn't really frayed or anything like that now as far as this keyboard goes it's not amazing or anything but it hasn't ripped or torn like the first generation ipad pro keyboards now the only complaint i really have about the keyboard well i guess there's two complaints really is one is you've only got two adjustments and the other is because it doesn't have a microfiber cloth up against the display of the iPad pro. What happens is, is your fingers while you're typing, leave oil residue on the keyboards themselves or on the keys themselves. And then when you fold it down onto the iPad pro, it ends up leaving little key marks behind and then you have to wipe the display more often. So you'll see there's a bunch of little fingerprints on it. And I just don't find it to be as oleophobic as the previous generation. It's not a huge deal, but definitely something thing I notice. Now let me set this aside and I haven't had any issues with the iPad Pro bending as far as durability. I know some people have had this issue but with it being in this keyboard case this is pretty rigid so this adds a bunch of stability and rigidity to the overall design so this helps a lot so if you don't have a case on your iPad Pro you may have some bending issues but I really have had no issues with it whatsoever. Now the overall durability, other than the bending, no issues. You see, you've seen it's been in a case, so there's not really much use on the back or anything like that. There's a couple marks where the pogo pins from the case are, but it's held up well. Now if we take a look at the Apple Pencil, let me take it off of the iPad. The pencil is held up well, and you'll see there's a couple marks on it, and that's from it touching the iPad all the time and charging. It's not really too much of an issue, but it's just something that I noticed. It keeps this little permanent mark there. It's from the iPad itself. And so you'll see here, you've got the iPad's charge port there, and it somehow marks it up but let's unlock the iPad and face ID on this works really well in all of these different orientations so when I unlock it no issue there it doesn't matter which way it is it it will even unlock flat on the table like this many times when I look at it so if I lock it here and it's not unlocked yet but if I tilt it up at that's at about a 30 degree angle towards my face it unlocks so it works really well there now as far as the overall use of this well I really enjoy using this and it was great with iOS 12 it's not as great with iPad OS 13 because it's just far more buggy in fact I had a lot of touch responsiveness issues with it after upgrading to that but prior to upgrading to that it was solid no issues whatsoever but then occasionally I'll just lose lose the touch ability it just won't scroll or something along those lines I'll have to lock it unlock it and then it will work and then worst case scenario is I have to reboot it and this is not on a beta this is on the public release version so occasionally it gives me an issue and it's a pain but most of the time it's great to use now this display is a phenomenal display it has great brightness it goes really bright and then as dim as you want really and this 120 hertz pro motion display is something they need to put on the iphone because this display when you're just scrolling it's super smooth all of the time and then when you want to just leave it like this it's fine and you can see what you're looking at but anytime you scroll what it does is it just ramps that speed up so that the scrolling is faster and it's something that i would love to see on the iphone they added to google's pixel and one plus has it so i'd love to see it on not just the ipad but also the iphone but it's great on the iPad. As far as using this, it's my main device when I'm not editing videos. So I can even edit video on here using things like LumaFusion. And I play around with this, but because there's not some plugins that Final Cut Pro has, I find that it doesn't work well for me. But it's more than powerful enough. This is a 4K video, and you'll see it scrubs through it without any hiccup whatsoever. And 
it's amazing. This will handle four streams of 4k, no problem. And then I can edit photos with Pixelmator photo or affinity photo that I just started using. And it's just an amazing device to use. It's amazing that it really never gets hot and I can edit video and export video faster than I can on my iMac pro. So I would love to use this on the go full time. Maybe I'll get used to that and be able to do it. But if I'm not using it for consuming videos on YouTube or checking email, I'm using it for video games and things like that. But most of the time I'm using it as consumption and an email and web browser, and then occasionally some editing photo editing and things like that. But I love this device. The speakers are amazing. I still am amazed that that much sound and that quality of sound comes out of these speakers every time I use it. So I often don't find myself using headphones with this because the speakers are great. So they have great bass and great range, especially for something this small. Now, battery life, of course, is a very important thing. And this, when it was new, easily got 10 hours of battery. Now it's been questionable with iPad OS again. So if I go back to battery, let me bring this down. I'll turn on dark mode. It's a little easier to see, but battery here, you'll see, well, let's go to the last 10 days. And yesterday I only used it for an hour and 34 minutes and then had five hours and 30 minutes of screen off time. Apparently YouTube was using it and I didn't know it. But if you look at some of the usage, it's great. Five hours and 42 minutes with 50% usage for the most part. But then some days it's just not so good. So an hour and a half, and it was only used for about a quarter of its battery. So it goes back and forth. I would say that when it does 10 hours, that's what you expect. But depending on which version of iOS it's on really makes a difference as far as that goes. And that is really it for this iPad. This is, like I said, my favorite Apple device I've used in a very long time. Some people say that it's kind of soulless because it doesn't have a direct form, but I like it because it's a sheet of glass. I love the, the curved corners. You may or may not like that on the display, but I like that a lot. And it just looks great. It doesn't have PWM, so it's not flickering the display, so it doesn't bother my eyes. And I don't really use the camera. I know some people love that, but I don't really use it. But this really could be my main computing device, and I could definitely recommend this to someone if they don't want to use a regular computer or anything like that, because this is all the computer you really need unless there's a specific task you want to do. You have everything from pages to numbers to word or Excel, whatever you want. And it works well on this device. So most tasks can be easily done on this if the display is large enough for you. So maybe one day Apple will bring final cut pro and I can use this on the go a hundred percent, but for now I'll continue to use my MacBook. but I love this device. And until Apple comes out with a new one, which we thought they would already, I'll be using this one, but let me know your thoughts of the iPad pro in the comments below. It's definitely my favorite device. I bring it with me everywhere all the time. And and I charge it through USB-C all the time. Maybe if I had a complaint about it, it would be that uh, I would like more ports and a headphone jack. Otherwise, it's a great device. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll link this wallpaper in the description as I always do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to see more of these videos as soon as they're released. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.